Hi, thank you for joining uh, this this live session. I'm going to be joined again uh, very shortly by with uh, Joseph Belieber. Um, I did a session, a live recording with him um, only yesterday, I think. Um, yeah, yesterday, and we were speaking about Romans eight, and there's so much. There is so much in in Romans eight, and so this is the second um, the second discussion, and we're just going to be focused on the the the, the start really of Romans eight, and um, it's all about living life in the spirit, and we're going to be talking about our our sin nature, and we're going to be touching on on lust, and um, and the effects that these things can have on our life both before coming into the truth, before coming into faith and giving our life to Jesus and then afterwards and the different things that the different things that are going on um in um in our in our minds which can affect our behaviour, our choices, of how we live our life, um where we focus our attention. I think it's gonna be a really interesting discussion um i've got some personal experiences um around um around kind of sin and lust which i may bring up um if they if they're appropriate for our conversation as well so um and some of what we talk about may may just give you things to think about maybe maybe thought provoking for you whether whether you're in faith or not um we all have a sin nature that is um that is just that is a reality of um of us humans so it should be an interesting and hopefully thought provoking discussion with uh, joseph please do add some comments or questions if you've got anything to add or if you'd like to expand upon anything that we've said it would be um, it would be good to get your feedback. Thank you, yeah. Thank you, Fiona. Yeah, it's um, that our sin nature is it, something for me personally has been a really interesting experience from coming into faith. that how there is still those those the temptations are still there and how our sin nature still tries to connect us with with say the temptations of this world but then what i've experienced personally inside my mind and from a from 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 a spiritual point of view what's happened since I've given my life to Jesus. And yeah, thank you, Fiona. Apostle Paul, he did say he did things that he didn't want to do. I'm looking forward to this. It's um, Joseph has got um, many more years experience than me um, in faith, in Christ. So I think there's gonna be a lot of depth that, um, that Joseph will be able to add and my I'll be sharing more things of just being such a a young born again Christian of just over eighteen months, so um having led my life up until that point, living with my sin nature and living with the the life circumstances and the situations and the temptations that um, that I lived through. See if I can get Joseph added on. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to get in, it's not allowing me. Is it not? Can, yeah, can I try again? Yeah, you try again, it should work. Yeah. What, watch, what, okay, watch, okay. I'm, I come off now. Yeah, yeah.
Thank you for your patience. I've had to say this a few times in the last 48 hours. Patience is a virtue. The testing of our faith produces perseverance. So we should rejoice. <laughs> Thank you, Fiona. Yeah, I'm, um, I'm, I just praise God. I just give God all the glory for my life, for, for all the blessings, for, for leading me, guiding me, just strengthening me, giving me wisdom, discernment, blessing me and my family with miracles, signs and wonders. It's, um, it's, a, it's a joy to behold. I just thank our Father in heaven, our Creator. Um, let's just try and get... I'm just trying to share this with Joseph. Oh, it's Joseph. Hi. Hello. We're on. We're on. Hey. Technology's working. Hello. He's gone. Joseph's gone. <laughs> Hi, Anna Marie. Thanks for joining. I'm just trying to get Joseph on. Um, he came in, but he's gone again. It's um, just teasing. Thank you for any those that are watching just for your patience. Um, I do. I pray in faith that it will be worth the wait with what we discuss and maybe some fresh revelations for you. Maybe some light bulb moments. Maybe just coming in more into the truth of who you are in Christ. Just wait for Joseph to come back. He's trying to come back then. Right. Don't press anything. <laughs> don't, don't, don't press anything. <laughs> so we're on. Yeah, we're on. Thank Amen. you. Thank you, Joseph. Amen. Yeah. Thank you so much. So I've just, um, I've just first few minutes just talking about Romans yeah. 8 that we started to have a have a discussion about, um, was it just yesterday yeah. or two days ago? You know, you know, when you're in a spirit, time just flies, brother. Yeah, wow. So, um, and um, yeah, we know that um, there is no, no condemnation yeah. for us um, in Christ, uh, for, for those who belong, who belong in Christ Jesus. And this is about um, living in the spirit and and it's talking about sin and our sin nature. So I was just doing a bit of a setup mm -hmm. to say that, you know, for me, it's only been 18 months yeah. um, coming into mm -hmm. faith, new Christian, some really interesting experiences yeah. I've had um, yeah. dealing with um, lust and temptation mm -hmm. and, and the temptations that are around I this know. world since I've, since I've come into mm -hmm. faith. But do, do you want to just give um, a bit of a foundation in... I suppose a bit more about our sin nature and just maybe set the scene a little bit. Absolutely. Everything that you... Hi, Fiona. Hi, uh, Anna, Anna Mary. God bless you all. Thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, I'm just... It's a, it's a blessing to be with Brother Paul. And, um, you know, his heart, he just... Every time he says, our father, my father, it's, it's amazing. It's, he brings it back home, you see, uh, because God is the father to the fatherless. And God is there. He loves you. He He's not trying to love. He loves you already. He, he, he is love. 1 John 4 verse 8. God is love. So uh, I just want to say anybody who's looking for love out there, come on, man, join us. Join us and you will enjoy it. So uh, that's it. Just say, right. So I like what you said, Paul, living in the spirit. This is what we're talking about. This is high life. This is high level of living, living in the spirit. That's what we're talking about. So the Romans, the Romans, chapter, Romans chapter 8, verse 1, opened by saying, therefore, absolutely, therefore, now, <laughs> John is looking for love. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> yeah, God's love, yeah. the agape love. Paul will tell you about it. For, watch the video yeah. on agape love. Amen. So, so, when you look at it, uh, 
there is not therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the, the spirit. Now, the therefore comes because there's been amazing struggle in the flesh. Paul in Romans chapter 7, he's like, wow, the things that I want to do, I can't do them. But the things that I don't want to do, my nature, my sinful nature, I find myself doing them. And he goes, wow, who's going to set me free? The last verse of chapter 7, he says, oh, I thank my God that with my mind, my spirit, I serve the Lord. With my flesh, my carnal nature, me, myself, and I, my self-centeredness, my selfishness, Oh, by the way, Paul, do you know the opposite of love? I just gave you a clue. You see, many people will think is hate. The opposite of love, naturally, people feel is hate. No, because love is a demonstration. If I love you, brother, I will not talk bad about you. If I love you, I will not covet your wife. If I love you, I will not steal from you. If I love you, I will I praise you. I will value you. I will esteem you more than, you know, do you understand? When you love a woman, yeah. you give her stuff. You make time for her. You give her flowers. You give her chocolate. You give her, you know what I'm saying, right? So I can't cut you open to see love, but I see what you do that explains to me that you have love. Do you agree? So yeah. the opposite, yeah. so love is always giving. Love is selfless. So the opposite of love is selfishness. Because a selfish person only thinks about themselves. Even in a love situation, they want to be satisfied first. So they're self-centered, selfishness. So what they do is all about me, myself, and I. Does that make, I mean, it makes a big sense? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because, yeah, because, thank because you. love yeah. gives, self takes. Take, take, take is me, me, me. What about me? What about me? What about me? Me, me. Okay. Now, so now welcome to the love family. And Fiona, welcome to Agape family. Hallelujah. So verse two now tells us, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ, Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Okay. Has made me free means has delivered me. It means he has set me free. It means it is used exclusively in Jews in Jesus Christ, setting sinful believers, sinful people at liberty from the dominion of sin. Basically, the law for the law of, of the spirit, okay, of life in Christ, in Christ, not outside Christ. Brother, your life can never be right outside Christ. Never. Your life can never be right in religion. Never. Your life can never be right because you attend churches and you tick the boxes. Your life will be right in the life giver who is Jesus Christ. And he give you the Holy Spirit. We bring that brings abundant life to you. So the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free has made me free, has delivered me, has acquitted me, has liberated me from the law of sin and death. Amen? I'm just Amen. trying to make mince meat out of those verses. Why there's no condemnation yeah. in verse 1? There's no condemnation in verse 1 because the answer is in verse 3. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God did it by sending his own son in the likeness of a sinful flesh. On account of sin, he condemned sin in the flesh. That's why verse 1 says there's no more condemnation because Jesus took it. Amen? Does that make any sense, Amen. brother? Amen. Yeah, um, uh, this, is, no, I, this, is, this is great for me and hopefully for a few people that are watching I this I want you well. to help me. Yeah. Your Bible seems to be more detailed. Do you mind reading those two verses up to verse 3 for us in your, in your Bible? Because I know your yeah. Bible is more detailed than mine. Go ahead, please. So, yeah, this is uh, NLT. Yes. Um, so I'm, on, I'm, I'm using the app, NLT. Mm -hmm. So just from the mm -hmm. start. 
So now there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. And because you belong to him, the power of the life-giving spirit has freed you from the power of sin that leads to wow. death. The law, the law of Moses was unable to save us because of the weakness of our sinful nature. So God did what the law could not do. He sent his own son in a body like the bodies we sinners have. And in that body, God declared an end to sin's control over us by giving his son as a sacrifice for our sins. A sacrifice for our I, sins. Go ahead. I think just, just um, for me, the word, you know, where it says in verse two, the power, the power, the power of the, the power of the life giving yeah. spirit has freed you from the power of sin and it, i think it's su it's such an important word this the we are talking about it's powerful like before faith before we give our life to christ it, there is that power that dark power over yes. us that is that, that we cannot there is nothing in this world that can that can allow us to defeat that power of of what is trying to influence our thoughts and our behavior and our actions mm -hmm absolutely brother you, you 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 said it absolutely there because you need a greater power to deliver you to save you from that power because you can't save yourself you're trapped you sin because you're a sinner you sin because you have the genes of adam now once you are in christ you receive the power to love the power to forgive the power that sets you free to love the unlovable the power to accept even to receive you know brother some people don't even know how to receive freely you even need the power yeah. to just humble yourself and say what is it free jesus really did that for me wow by his stripes we were healed wow his body was broken so that mine can be whole wow so it is is that true that simplicity of the truth of gospel, people can't even receive it. So yes, you need a power of God, which is the grace of God that comes upon you to soften your heart. So you can accept the simplicity of the gospel. So Christ paid the price, the penalty. He took our condemnation, you and my condemnation. He took it away, amen, in himself so that we can be free. That's what verse 4 says. Why did Jesus did all of this? So that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the to the according to the spirit. So that the so whatever God required from all of them in the old testament, they couldn't fulfill it. Because the law was the law of Moses was weak because it was in the flesh. It was in the flesh means carnal. In the flesh means sinful desires that are natural to me. You know, even even from childhood, you see children always, you, you can see them trying to mess about, trying to do this. We passed over it, but you can see sin is there already. It's tempting them, it's pushing them, they're pushing your boundaries a little bit because of the sinful nature that's why nobody is born a christian you gotta believe you have to come to faith amen yeah. so so yeah so no honestly so the power of lust the power of anger the power of this you've been set free from that brother amen amen the, the um talking of just talking about the power and the and the like lust just just to talk about lust mm -hmm. for for a few mm -hmm. minutes because you know we only need to i don't know the numbers but the the money that's spent on and the or the money that is um the, the money that is made from from the port the, from the porn yeah. industry um is is astronomical and obviously this is about lust this is about obviously sexual desires this is about turning people away from the from the husband or the wife or the boyfriend the girlfriend and you know, doing things in your dark secret places. Um, something we, I think we touched on yesterday that when we come to that realization that God, 
God sees everything, knows everything, and we, we, we've never been alone. It's, um, I think for a lot of people, maybe currently not in faith, um, potentially facing into that truth of God, that the things that they've done both in public and in private, have uh, our Father has seen them all. Yeah. He's seen the very worst of us. He knows, he, knows the, he knows the very worst thoughts that we've ever had in our life. Um, that's, just a, that's just an all, all other like trying to comprehend that, comprehend our father and, and how much he knows us. But, but yeah, the, the kind of the sinful nature and, and lust. So I, I experienced something probably about nine months ago. So I'd been in faith about six or seven months. And so, you know, I'm, my mind is being renewed. Like, you know, our father is transforming me from the inside. Out. He's giving me a, a heart of flesh and a, rather than a heart of stone. And, and so I'm, I'm going through this significant change and, and a lot of it in that first, in the first six, 12 months of my, my, my journey in faith, uh, the scripture talking about you don't put new wine in old wineskins because the old wineskins would, would burst. Instead, you put new wine in new wineskins to preserve both the, the, the wineskins and the new yeah. wine. That for me, that pressing and that crushing and that creation of the new wineskins in me after 41 years of living with my sin nature, having never prayed in my life once and never, never therefore seek God to come into my life. And, and there was no Holy Spirit working, working through me. So the, the, there's a lot of transformation needed that my sin nature has, has very much been settled in and rooted into to me and, and mm -hmm. how I am. So it was an experience I had about eight months ago when I was with my three daughters. It was on a Sunday and, um, they wanted, oh, Saturday, they, they wanted to go swimming, you know, swimming bath. So we'll, we'll go along and, um, oh, great, having a good time. And you've got the big pool, you've got the main pool, and then you've got the little toddler's yeah. pool. So toddler's pool was a bit warmer. So we ended up kind of being between the two yeah. for a bit. And you've got the, you've got, you've got the lifeguards around, you know, around the outside. And uh, generally they were f fairly young lifeguards, you know, they were probably like late teens, early 20s. Mm -hmm. Doing, doing the job, you know, just looking out, keeping people mm -hmm. safe. So we were in the main pool, then we went into the little pool, and then in the big pool, back in the little pool, and there was, um, in back in the little pool, that originally there'd been a, like a lad there, you know, again, maybe 19, 20 years old, with his, mm -hmm. you know, just keeping a lookout. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's only a little pool, and he was just stood there, and um, just looking over the little pool, with like a few families in whatever. Mm -hmm. And so whilst, whilst we were in there, I'd seen this, I'd seen this lad, um, there was basically, it must've been like a changeover. So this, uh, this young woman came on and she was probably about 19 years old or something mm -hmm. like that. It was probably similar race mm -hmm. to the, to the guy. And, um, and I saw her initially as you know, you, as you look around, you see people and this, this young lady, she was incredibly attractive, 19 years old, you know, she's in a, she's in the kind of gear for, for obviously being a, being a lifeguard and everything. And I knew this was about nine months ago. I, I could sense what was happening inside of me. There was that. There was that um, allure yeah. to 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 kind of to kind of look yeah. at this uh, to look at this young lady, and she's like, you know, twenty, probably twenty three years younger than me, or something mm -hmm. like that. Yeah, she's she's like probably nineteen years old, and I'm um, I'm with my three daughters. Yes, my um, from a relationship point of view, my relationship at, at this point at that moment is uh has, has broken down but i'm still a married man i've got my i've got my wedding ring on and this this young lady doesn't know yeah she doesn't know anything about me she just sees a guy in a swimming pool with his three daughters you know saying daddy daddy can you pick me up or whatever so that's like the setup of this situation but there's two things that yeah. went on this this young lady um the way in which she was looking at me um <laughs> she didn't care the fact that I had a wedding ring on and I'm with my daughters and that my wife could have been out shopping or she could have been out for a spa weekend with her yeah. friends or something like that. She didn't know anything about me. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm just a married guy with my three daughters mm -hmm. in the pool. But, but there was a, there was a very significant, like, um, she was trying to get my yeah. attention. Let me just say she was, she was trying to get my attention. She was looking at me and, and then in, in, inside of me was that, was that allure and that kind of lustful kind of eyes of maybe looking, but then, but then no, this, the Holy spirit, the Holy spirit was working mm -hmm. in me and turning me away mm -hmm. from it because, 
it's not what it's, it's not what I want. It's not what I'm looking mm -hmm. for. I'm I'm happy. I've got my three children. I'm there to swim. I'm not. I wasn't there to to kind of um, strike up a bit of a conversation mm -hmm. with or to develop some eye contact with with some attractive young young girl at all. But there is a real the power. Uh, this is going back to the power that we've just been talking yeah. about. There is a power there that this this young lady was clearly being influenced by a sinful yeah. power to to try and get my attention mm -hmm. inside of me was was a power trying to draw me to kind of engage in that kind of eye mm -hmm. contact and um and i've got to say as well the, the that same power that we're talking about the sinful nature and, and the power of let's be frank about it the power of the enemy that wants us to think mm -hmm. these thoughts that he was trying to create inside of my mind my manifestations mm -hmm. and 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 it's what i was used to through my 20s and 30s mm -hmm. the you know when you're living in that sinful nature without the holy spirit mm -hmm. you have no power you can you might your mind can take you places that you don't want to go or or maybe some people do want to go because you you know you, you you you're visualizing stuff you're manifesting things you're, you're fantasizing so yeah. yeah in some cases some people would be happy that, that, that there's that power and they, and they can fantasize but in that pool that day mm -hmm. i was not wanting to go to that place whatsoever and so there was a power battle going on inside mm -hmm. my mind and so i was both mm -hmm. like in my mind but then physically like turning away and just focusing on my girls because that's what i was there for mm -hmm. but then after a few minutes um this young lady I, I was in this still in this little pool and the guy that had been before he just stayed in the same place because it's only a little pool this lady started mm -hmm. walking round slowly and methodically mm -hmm. on purpose walking round the pool so when i was stood near the side of the, the edge of the pool with my three daughters she was walking right right past me right past my kind of eye level mm -hmm. and um slowly slowly like just so planned and purposeful and and all i can describe with this is that this was a spiritual battle mm -hmm. between between good and evil and and obviously what was at play from this lady's perspective if this young lady if she was a born-again christian if she'd been born and raised in with born-again christian parents i know now she would not have been trying to engage me in some kind of kind of sexual like eye contact yeah. because it got it got to a point where i could i knew if i would have gone over to her and just said oh um do you want to, here's my number. Can I just give you my number? Or can I take your number down or something? If, if I would have done something mm -hmm. like that, I would, I would have got her number or she would have, she would have taken yeah. my number without yeah. doubt, without yeah. doubt. And so I just, yeah. What do you want to talk to me about what you've come to learn about, about yeah. lust and, and obviously I'm that sinful I'm nature. Last, I'm laughing at Anne-Mary. She, she's very, you know, talking about strategic and seductive spirit right there. Absolutely. And then there is, um, as it, you know, she talks about, uh, you know, when the uh, soon uh, something ears our heart opened by the wonderful Holy Spirit, we see our, you see our sin, praise Jesus. Yes, basically, there is something about the the old nature. The old nature is controlled, dominated, ruled by our sinful desires. I remember I said we sin because we are sinners. We born sinners. The, our parents never, I mean, in a, in a perfect environment, the parents don't teach you to do wrong. They teach you to do right all the time. But the wrong is inside of us by nature. You know, there's a song, that's, there's a song that says naughty by nature. This is how we are. So <laughs> what happened, brother, is that temptation, again, somebody mentioned temptation there. Temptation is not sin. Everybody can be tempted at any given time. It's when you fall into the temptation that it becomes sin. You, all of us are tempted daily to lust. You're tempted to, you know, to get angry. You're tempted by any other things, basically. Temptation is no sin. It's when you fall into the temptation. Now, to fall into the temptation, there has to be a process where you look. It, it always comes from our five senses. You look. And then you can choose to look away. You can look and say, wow, what an amazing creature of God. I'm un honestly amazing. Wow. Because I was, again, I was the same. I was absolutely in the, in the world. I was, you know what? I sinned. 
and I didn't have a problem with my sin. In fact, I was a very, very good sinner. I was just sinning because <laughs> that's it. And I have no shame. You know, when you're in darkness, that's what you do. That's your nature. Okay. So, but God knew I was blind. I was naked and I needed him. You know what I'm saying? He, he orchestrated the whole thing. So basically the process is this. You look, you either can choose to look away or you can look and then you can linger. You're having eye contact. Okay. So you're looking a little bit more. You're having eye contact, you're looking at the shape, looking at the form, you're looking at everything because now you're having eye contact. So, so you look, you linger, and then as you linger, because you're spending time looking, then you're lost. You see, the Bible says sin lies at the door. You see, absolutely. So now Jesus comes with a high standard. So I was saying, you look, you look away, that's fine. And you appreciate God's creature because God creature because God made us in his image. Okay. We are beautiful. We are wonderful. Now, all of a sudden, the words of God begin to add flow from inside of you. The rivers of living water begin to flow out because mm -hmm. whenever I'm tempted, I try and bring that thought captive quickly to the obedience of Christ, which is the obedience to the word. So basically, the word of God begins to come out. It's like, okay, yes, she's amazing. She's beautiful. God bless her. And then I turn away. So you look, look away. Or you look, linger, and then you're lost. And then you fall into temptation mm. because now, like Anne Mary said, you begin to strategize. You see, <laughs> you begin now to plan. If I go, I will give my number. She will take it all of a sudden. And now Jesus comes in Matthew chapter five. You know what he says? If you lost, if you commit adultery, basically, they, they thought you have to commit adultery. But Jesus said, if you lost after a woman, if you lost, you commit adultery with her in your heart. That's why, my brother, you and I, you know what? Even as we talk about it, I'm going like, Zzz. We hi let's hide ourselves in Christ. Let's invite people to hide themselves in Christ because Christ is our uh, proof. Uh, how do you call it? You know that. Uh, uh, you know that bulletproof. He yeah. has overcome yeah. it. He has overcome everything you and I we're going through. So now you and I we put His word in. Colossians chapter three verse three says, "You died and your life is hidden in Christ and Christ in God." So that's double locking. You died when you believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit, Ephesians chapter 1. Now you died, your life is hidden in Christ and Christ in God. So you double lock. So now when that comes, you recognize it because the Holy Spirit is a lamp, a light in you that shows you, exposes you the sin that is in us. So now what he does is that he calls, you to, he calls us to repent so we can see sin we can repent of it and we don't have to fall into it. And if we fall, he will never let us go. He will cause us to a divine conviction, not condemnation. Remember, there's not therefore no condemnation. So he knows you are a sinner. God knows. Be, listen, before you sin, he knows you're going to do it. So he made provision like a good father, like an insurance. He made provision. So to everybody who will be watching this video, he, God has made provision already for your sin. Behold, the Lamb of God who take the sin away. Behold, Christ, he is, the, he is your sacrifice. So for the sin that you're going to do in the future, Christ paid the price for it already. That's what you read in verse 3, brother. And then yeah. verse 4, because we, we're closing with verse 4, because next the next uh, uh Step three or lesson three or whatever, we're going to start with verse five and the title will be the mind, the mind, the battle of the mind. So in verse four, it says, Jesus did all of this sacrifice that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not work according to the spirit, but according to this, according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. So all that Christ has done, he's done it so that you and I we can be not just sanctifying him hidden, but I want you to close by reading in your NLT Bible because it will break it down a little bit so people can understand because that's the secret. My brother, you and I, we can stumble in many ways, but in Christ, 
he has he t- he's taking a stumble for you and me now you and me we can Amen. recognize sin from a distance and you and me as we recognize it and you and i as we develop this we can confess to one another and the righteous the prayer of the righteous bang humbles us a lot so please read verse four and then you can add any comments that you want please brother yeah yeah so he did this so that the just requirement of the law would be fully satisfied for us who no longer follow our sinful nature but instead follow the spirit will be fully satisfied this is god speaking fully satisfied in us so when god sees you paul he doesn't see paul he sees his son in you amen remember uh, amen. remember uh, colossians chapter 1 verse 27 i give the scriptures out so that people can go search because you and i we know here to give our opinion brother yeah that's our guiding principles we're here to give people ammunition, the word of God, so they can go and be strengthened. So in Colossians chapter 1, verse 27, it says, Christ in Paul, the hope of glory. So Christ in you, the hope that you will resurrect, the hope that you will be glorified. Hallelujah. If anybody sees Paul right now, touch him because in the future, he will be so glorious. Amen. So that's what we're talking about. Christ in you, the hope of glory. So no matter what we're going through, brother, we are in him and him in us. So when God sees you, Paul, he doesn't see your sin. He sees his son on the cross. That was the divine exchange that happened. Go ahead, Amen. brother. No, I'm just, um, just still being so young in, in the faith to... If someone was to ask me now, so like the Ten Commandments, which we were talking, you know, in terms of like the, the, the law of Moses, that Ten Commandments, I genuinely couldn't, firstly, mm-hmm. name, go, name all, all mm-hmm. ten. Um, I've seen them, I've been in churches on previous years mm-hmm. in my life, but coming into the Spirit and being filled with the Holy Spirit now, the, it, is, it is so profoundly life-changing mm-hmm. and... Uh, I think I'm just led to, to bring up here that there might be some people watching this yes. who, um, depending on depending on the, the the church that they've been to and the and the and the and how, how their life has been as a Christian, yeah. I as a general as a generalisation, I feel that there's probably quite a lot of Christians in yeah. the world who haven't really come into having the Holy yeah. Spirit come upon them. To, to to really start to transform them and renew them and to and all the gifts of the spirit and the the wisdom that comes from the holy mm-hmm. spirit and the discernment mm-hmm. and the and the power and the love and all these things it i, I feel that there's probably yeah still a lot of christians maybe who, who would then say still really struggling for instance with going back to earlier on talking about like porn industry and things mm-hmm. like that I saw something incredible a few days ago on one of the um, on one of the kind of groups that I'm in, and it was someone openly kind of sharing on this post. With, and there's a lot of people in this group talking about their struggle that they have with with porn. Yes, and that that was that was like hey, wow. That like I'm here um, for, to to get. I'm here. It happens absolutely. It, it's a, it's a spiritual. It's one of the worst spiritual. Is physical and yet spiritual sin because you become one. I, oh my goodness, uh, brother, we have to talk about this on a separate time. Basically, yeah. what happened is the, the porn industry, fornication, all of those things. The reason why they're more dangerous because they don't just affect your body, they affect your spirit because you become one with the person you're doing it. Remember at the blessing when God, God says, a man shall be one with his wife the two shall become one flesh so you become one with that person so it's deeper that's why in separation there's always a problem so we can talk about it and break it down i've been set free from it by the grace of god hallelujah and with everybody everybody yes it's a massive yeah it's massive it is an assignment from satan absolutely and mary i completely understand that but we can talk about it in a different time, brother. It's, an, it's a powerful thing. Yeah. And it's a stronghold for more yeah. men than women. 
Mm -hmm. uh, you can add all the comments you want, but I wanted you to bless your people with uh, two verses in, ver in, in Romans chapter 13, please, brother, because uh, responding to your Ten Commandments. Just, if you can turn to Romans 13. Go on, right, yeah. yeah I wanted to it. read Romans in your, 13. yeah, I wanted to read in your version, Romans chapter 13, verse 8 and 9. That's all. Verse 8, 9 and 10. It will, it will complete. Anybody who has a problem with knowledge of Ten Commandments, they all summarize there. Boom. Go ahead. There we go. Love fulfills God's requirements. <laughs> oh, oh. Owe nothing to anyone except for your obligation to love one another. <laughs> if you love your neighbor, you will fulfill the requirement of God's law. For the commandments say, you must not commit adultery, you must not murder, you must not steal, you must not covet. These and other such commandments are summed up in this one commandment. <laughs> love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to others, so love fulfills the requirements of God's law. That's it. Nothing, nothing to add to it. <laughs> is that is that wonderful, brother? And I, I think for me to summarise yes. this, because uh, we'll probably close Absolutely. shortly. To 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 have lived lived all my years of my life, um, teenager, twenties, thirties with this sinful nature and talking about lust and just things like that to, to now be living in the, with the Holy spirit and to have such love for other people, males, females, people of young children, elderly people that I see walking down the street, hobbling around the love that I have. It is not sexual. It's not a, it's not a, it's, it, it's a love of, it's a heart to heart love. It's not, it's not a sin. It's not a, um it's not a flesh love it's it's a heart love and and um you know there, there'd probably be some people in my position obviously i'm currently obviously not you know not not in a relationship and there's various people that connect up with me that send me messages if you were to look at my friends requests on facebook there's there's a a wide range of people and often it's more weighted towards females and there's there's attractive females on there and i've connected up with various people and um yeah take take faith out of it and some some guys would probably think oh i'd love to be in pole shoes and uh, i've been like attractive women come knocking on his door but for me there's just not there's no that i suppose i'm so clean like i've been cleansed so much from that sinful nature, that lustful kind of thoughts. It's just, it's a thing of beauty. Yes. And, and so I, I can, I can have a relationship with, with anyone and, and, but it, it's a relationship. It's like a, a spiritual relationship based on love and heart. And, and then, and being filled with the love of God and like agape love, it's, you, you get into so many deep conversations so quickly. <laughs> you go beyond the superfluous and you're talking about what really yes. matters, what's really going on in their life, what, what, you know, the turmoil that they're going through or the challenges that they've had. And it's just, oh, it's just profound. This is God's, God's love. It's just beautiful. Amen. Amen. Brother. Beautiful. Amen. Because there, there's nothing to add to that brother. Honestly, I, I pray for those who will be watching these videos to know that Christianity is Christ. And, he will do what you cannot do. Absolutely. Uh, like I joined with Fiona to, you know, who is blessing you is you are transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, we can do nothing. So yes, Amanda and Mary said, be imitator of Jesus Christ. Absolutely. How do we do that? He gives us the Holy Spirit who leads us into all truth. And to, to just to close, because I want you, if you want, you can close in prayer, please. I wanted to give you this one. As he purifies you, in Matthew chapter 5, he says, Blessed are the pure in heart, they shall see God. You know what that means? Blessed are the pure in heart, they shall see God in everything, in his creation, and in everyone, because he made people in his image. So you see the potential of God, rather than looking at somebody in a sexual way, you're looking at somebody in a loving kind of way, that is the potential of God in that person. So blessed are the pure in heart. All of a sudden, in Titus, Titus, there's a small book. Titus is just a two page, two pages. 
Titus chapter 1, verse 15, it says, to the pure, all things are pure. You see? But to those who are not pure, nothing is pure. Even their own heart and mind is defiled. So when you're looking with the, the attention of love and care and, you know, you know, somebody's looking with lust and all of those kind of stuff. So yeah, brother, this is the... This is when he's purifying you. This is what he does, brother. May God bless you. Keep that heart. I'm telling you, it will save many people. And I pray in the name of Jesus that he will keep you in his love. Because nothing in the kingdom of God works without love. Go ahead. You can close in Amen. prayer. Brother. Amen. Father, thank you. Thank you for this evening. Thank you for bringing Joseph into my life. And thank you for thank you for who you brought on to this Facebook Live and for everyone that will listen to and watch this video um, in times um, on from this, Father. I just lift each and every one of us up. We have all been chosen to be free and who the sun sets free is free indeed. And, and we just thank you for your Holy Spirit, Father, because it's without your Holy Spirit, we could not do the things that we do. We wouldn't have the strength. We wouldn't have the patience. We wouldn't have the love. We wouldn't have the discernment or the wisdom that comes from your Holy Spirit. And I just pray, Father, in faith that you are pouring out, as I'm sharing these words, your Holy Spirit on the people listening to these words and the people that will listen to them on this recording, on YouTube, on Facebook, wherever, so that more and more people are getting filled with your Holy Spirit and more and more people are coming into the truth and the revelation of who we are in Christ and your agape love. And I just thank you and I praise you for the testimonies, for the transformations of people's heart, minds, bodies and spirits that you are doing right now and you will continue to do every single day, Father, in what is the greatest ever spiritual awakening. And I just give you all the glory for our lives and for and for i'm going to declare over everyone father that each and every one listening to this and in future will all come to experience in their lives day to day the peace of god which surpasses all understanding and and it will guard our hearts and minds in christ jesus and thank you father for taking us away from our sinful nature and taking us away from the the lustful desires that that have that have led to so much agony and disaster and so much heartache for so many people and couples and marriages and relationships in this world that we live in. And thank you for everything that you're doing, Father. I declare all of this in faith in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Amen, brother. May God bless you and God bless everyone. And we see you soon as we continue the study of Romans chapter 8. Thank you. Thank you, Joseph. It's, um, it's an absolute blessing having you in my life. God Bye -bye. bless you and your family. Bye-bye.